Welcome to Palio's Chalkboard Thursday. If you're wondering, yes, that is a horse. We are shooting in Saratoga Springs, New York, home of the oldest thoroughbred racetrack and sporting venue in the United States, Saratoga Racecourse, and home to Palio. We're an advertising agency. Over the next few weeks, we are going to fill this chalkboard with insightful, thought-provoking topics around branding, marketing, and multi-channel integration within pharma. So sit back and enjoy Palio's Chalk Chat. Hi, I'm Christina Smith and I'm a research analyst here at Palio. Today I'll be talking about four things to keep in mind when doing social listening research for pharmaceutical products. First is to have clear objectives. Just like any research methodology you choose, make sure you have clear research objectives before starting any social listening project. By determining exactly what you would like to gain out of this research, you will be able to choose the most targeted keywords possible to listen to and with what lens to dissect social media posts with. For example, are you interested in learning about patient discussions or physician discussions? Are you interested in what people are saying about your brands and your competitor brands? Or are you really more interested in identifying who the top people talking about a certain therapeutic category are? Or maybe you're interested in learning about um, what people who left a recent conference were discussing afterward. All these objectives are possible through social listening research, but it's important to have a clear objective of what type of information you would like to gather and understand um, before you start research. Quality over quantity. Having clear research objectives should help my next point of discussion, which is quality over quantity. Sometimes when conducting social listening research, it's necessary to lose some conversations that aren't as relevant to your research objectives in order to be able to really look closely at the information that you're interested in. It's going to be more valuable to the end user if the research um, evaluates to be able, if the research is able to look at a small number of highly relevant, highly interesting social media posts, then if it incorporates um, thousands of posts that aren't even really addressing the research objectives. Third is dig deeper. Social listening research can offer, offer up a lot of really interesting metrics and analytics on how people are talking about your brands online, but to really get the most out of social listening research, it's important to dig in a little deeper as to what those metrics really mean and what the strategic implications are. For example, if the metrics are showing the mentions of a certain competitor brand name mention peaks in social media once a quarter, that's a really interesting and a useful fact to know. But to know why that's happening is what's really interesting. Maybe there's something to be learned or maybe it's just good to have on your radar, but the point being is that the metrics are only scratching the surface of what's really valuable about doing social listening research. And finally, don't be afraid. It can definitely be scary to actively go searching for information that's being said about your um, product online, especially because of the anticipated discussions about things like side effects and adverse events. But don't let that be the one thing that keeps you from exploring this type of research methodology. Although adverse event reporting is required in pharma, a recent study showed that only 0.3% of posts about pharmaceutical brands across several different social media sites actually contained adverse events. So the possibility of finding a reportable adverse event through social media is, of course, very real, but the reality is that it's very unlikely to happen uh, at a high, frequen high frequency. And thanks for listening to this week's Chalk Chat on social listening research.